This simple to follow video will walk you through the steps to properly install a mesh mounted flagstone patio or floor. Mesh mounted flagstone works well for flooring and wall projects and will add a rustic appeal to any outdoor or indoor project. The mesh backing on this flagstone product differs from random flagstone as the name implies. Mesh mounted flagstone consists of multiple pieces of stone set on a plastic mesh backer. Each section is the same, but the overall sizes will vary. This product is designed for easy installation. These flagstone pieces are designed to be installed in an interlocking pattern where individual sections fit together like a puzzle. Mesh mounted flagstone is best installed over a sub base and is not designed for loose sand installations. While flagstone that is backed in mesh should not be set in sand, sanded grout is recommended. For this demonstration, we will be creating a permanent installation with a concrete base. The installation surface must be clean, flat, and free of sealants, grease, and other oily compounds. Here's a tip. Make your subbase one inch lower than your final installation. The flagstone is typically one half inch thick. When you add in one half inch of thinset, you will have a one inch thick install to match up with adjacent flooring. Before beginning your flagstone project, you will need to measure to determine how much material you will need. Most mesh mounted flagstone is available in 2.7 square feet sections. Here's a tip. We recommend that you add 10% to 15% additional material to account for cuts and waste. Step 1. Materials and Tools For this project, you will need the proper amount of mesh mounted flagstone. A wet saw or circular saw fitted with a diamond tip blade. A half inch notched trowel thin set, a mixer bit, an electric drill, a grout float, a grout bag, a measuring tape, a sponge, a bucket of water, a rubber mallet, a large level, and sanded grout. Step 2. Lay out your project in stone cutting. Start the project by dry laying the mounted flagstone to determine where cuts will need to be made at the edges. Start by laying the mesh back flagstone at one end of the project. Allow the stone to go over the edge and mark the protruding stones to create straight sections on your first wall or edge. Dry lay the remaining flagstone to determine the best position. Be sure to use even space between sections. When the material meets an edge or area where it needs to be cut, lay a ruler or large level and mark the area to be cut with a grease pencil. After marking the flagstone, make the necessary cut on a wet saw. Here's a tip. Always use eye protection when cutting stone and keep fingers as far away from the blade as possible. When you come back to the area that needs part of a section, pull a piece of stone from the mesh backer and dry lay in the section. Mark both edges with a grease pencil and make the necessary cut on a wet saw. Step 3. Mixing the thin set and applying the stone. Now that the layout is ready, you can start mixing the thin set. When mixing thin set, it is important to follow the manufacturer's instructions. Only apply the thin set adhesive to one flagstone section at a time. Use a masonry 1 half inch square notch trowel to spread an even layer of thin set, approximately 1 half inch thick. Spread the mortar out in an area that is slightly larger than the size of one piece of mesh back flagstone. Set the mesh back flagstone and firmly press it into mortar bed. Check to ensure the mortar has penetrated through the mesh backing. You may have to use a rubber mallet to tap down high points. Use a level or other straight edge to ensure a flat and consistent surface from one piece to another. Make sure that the space between each section is even. Continue to each section one by one until the entire project is completed. Wipe the flagstones clean as they are set. Keep a bucket of water and a sponge to wipe off the thin set. Step 4. Grouting. Sweep and remove any excess thin set with a wet sponge after the project is completed. Let the thin set adhesive dry for 24 hours before grouting or sealing. Most mesh mounted flagstone is made with slate. Slate is very porous and sealing should be done before grouting. This will keep the grout from sticking to the stone. 
If your project requires sealing before grouting, skip to step 5 and come back to grout after you're done. Prepare your selected sanded grout according to the grout preparation guide on the package. Very important tip, always use sanded grout for this type of installation. Apply the grout with a grout bag or grout float. Before the grout dries, wipe off any excess with a trowel or grout float. After grouting, use a wet sponge to wipe off excess grout from the stone before it dries. Step 5. Sealing. To protect your stone from stains and spills, sealing the stone and grout is recommended. Most grouts recommend 2-3 to three days to set up before sealing. Check with the grout manufacturer for their recommendation. Here's a tip. Use a piece of wood or cardboard to protect areas that are not being sealed. As slate is very porous, it requires two coats of sealer. The second application allows for full penetration of the sealer into both grout and the slate. Here's a tip. There are two sealer options, impregnator and enhanced. Impregnator will provide a natural appearance, while an enhanced sealer gives the stone a wet or dark look.